So I saw this headline the other day, K2 spice contamination seen nationwide. And, you know, this is a sexy topic in the area of psychiatry and emergency and emergency psychiatry, also in emergency medicine, because we're seeing runs of people and they usually come in clusters of people intoxicated with K2 spice and um, this new contamination or the, the changes that they've, they've undergone, the new synthetic cannabinoids that are coming out seem to have a different set of presenting symptoms than the previous ones with intoxication. So let's dive right into a little bit about what K2 spice is. So these are synthetic cannabinoids, like I said in the, in the previous slide. They're a class of recreational drugs that's really grown substantially in popularity. A lot of people are using it, and I think for a number of different reasons. One is that they're inexpensive. Another reason is that they're readily available. And one of the main ones and the way I think these medications really got started, or these drugs rather, got started, was with um, the fact that they were not detectable on your standard urine drug screening. So you had a lot of people who were either on probation or in the military or working a job where they were re regularly drug tested. And these people would not be able to use, nor you know, regular marijuana, let's say, because they would their urine drug screen would be positive. So they would go to these drugs because they would provide a you know theoretically a similar high or a similar effect, and it would be you know it would be something that wouldn't show up, so they wouldn't get in trouble for it. Now the synthetic cannabinoids are a lot more potent. So they stimulate the cannabinoid receptors 10 to, 8, 10 to 800 times as much, right? They're way more potent drugs than your regular THC that's found in uh, typical marijuana. Common symptoms of intoxication previously with the older classes of synthetic cannabinoids, we saw more of the like autonomic symptoms. It's like tachycardia, diaphoresis, hypertension, etc. The new symptoms that we're seeing with this, with the latest changes and newer synthetic cannabinoids is we're seeing not only the, the recent increased bleeding risk that was also mentioned, there was a, there, that was in previous uh, places, but now we're seeing this even new set of symptoms besides just increased bleeding. We're seeing people coming in with CNS depression, coming in with bradycardia, coming in with hypotension and respiratory depression. So more, so instead of the, you know, hypertension, tachycardia picture that we were seeing initially, now we're seeing almost the exact opposite of that. We're seeing the bradycardia, the hypotension, and the respiratory depression, in some cases even requiring intubation. So it's certainly something to be looking out for. Another important point is there's no antidote to these compounds. So when you do, when someone is intoxicated, the really your goal as an, say, an emergency doctor is to protect the airway, monitor the breathing, the circulation, etc and to, you know, provide supportive care as necessary, fluids as necessary, etc., to make sure that these people are, are, are going to be okay and that they're going to get through this period of intoxication. With that said, um, you know, a really interesting question to me regarding this topic was how would legalization of marijuana in the United States change the use of synthetic cannabinoids? So I think it would be really interesting to see what, type of use we're seeing in places like Colorado where it is legal for recreational marijuana. Now that doesn't change the fact that, you know, people on probation, people have jobs that are testing for it, um, people that are in the military are still not going to be able to use marijuana regularly, but I just wonder if that availability and the fact that it is legal will make people go more towards the standard products that are available in the stores versus these synthetic cannabinoids that they're buying over the internet or that they're buying in stores that, you know, we really don't know what you're getting. That's the scary part. Uh, you don't know what's in these products. And, um, you know, it could potentially lead to some adverse outcomes. So anyway, I'm curious to see what people think. I think it's a cool and uh, interesting topic. And like I said, certainly a sexy topic in psychiatry.